and welcome to episode number 40 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast uh, which is all about knitting and all of the other crafts that I occasionally do as well. So uh, yeah, it's been a while. I've uh, had the flu. I've been very, very ill uh, for the past three weeks, basically. Um, not been uh, much fun. I have not done that much, but then again, it's been three weeks, so even for not being able to do that much um, per day, uh, I've managed to do quite a bit since the last episode. So, well, <laughs> let's get into what I've been doing. And um, yeah, thank you so much for coming back after this uh, somewhat longer break than expected. <laughs> Anyway, um, so let's get into uh, what I've been up to the past uh, few weeks crafting-wise. Well, um, first of all, there is a finished object. And let me show you guys. I'm, I'm really happy with these. So they are my mittens. They are finished. And I'm, I'm really happy with what they look like. Um, yeah, uh, I... I'm pretty sure that I haven't shown you these uh, while completed yet um, because there was a place that I wanted to show you in one of these mittens and of course now I, I don't really see it but I think it must be on this mitten there seems to be this weird fold here and on this side you can see that there's one line where the yellow stitches in the, in the alternating stitch pattern just the seam where, where the yellow seems to pop a little bit more uh, than the uh, uh, green bit and that is because um, when, when I do color work I um, knit with uh, one strand of yarn over my left hand and the other one over my right hand and whatever I hold on my left hand my continental side it tends to be a little bit looser than what I hold on the right side so my tension is not equal you know for knit, knitting and or continental and flicking with what I do with my other hand so um, that's fine throughout the, the mitten uh, as a whole but uh, when you at some point switch which yarn um, you hold in what hand then you kind of get the the, the yeah one of uh, the other color seems to pop a little bit more and uh, you can also see it on the inside. I'm pretty sure that it's more obvious there. So here you can see the bit where I made the mistake. And on this side you can probably see it as well. Uh, yeah, I, I just changed which color is on top basically because because of the way I knit, uh, one one hand always gets on top of the other um, float, and uh, yeah, if you alter that, it's gonna be visible. I was considering going back to fix that, but I, then I thought it would be quite educational actually to to show you guys what what it looks like if you alternate it. And I think the rest of the mitten looks very nice and neat, also from the inside. Um, can't be bothered to pull the them inside out but I am quite happy with how that turned out um, might have made the same stick around here as well I'm not not really sure but that might also be because I've been shifting around a bit there because this is where where the gusset is so no, I'm not sure what happened there but yeah I just wanted to show you something well some people call this color dominant and I'm not really sure if it is dominance but one color is just on top of the other and you can also kind of see that some of these yellow stitches seem to lie higher or lower than than usual and uh, yeah that's just because I I changed uh, the order of the colors in my, in my hands but Overall, I'm, I'm really happy with this pair of mittens and I'm really glad that I went back and changed the size and uh, yeah, a pair of finished mittens and I'm gonna wear them. Um, these are not blocked yet, so if they look a little bit wonky, that's because they're not blocked, but then I feel like they, they look 
fairly even for a pair that is not yet blocked. So, and I'm not, not really sure that I'm going to block them as in put them over mitten blockers or anything. Um, but just, you know, soak them and wear them. That blocks them out good enough for me, uh, as per usual. So, he finished up that, yay! Then there is another project that uh, I've been working on and uh, last time I podcasted I was going to Cabaret in the evening and um, well this is how far I got. I uh, must admit that I, I was there, the lights went out, I grabbed my knitting and I dropped all of my stitches right away. So um, yeah, the first few minutes of the show were me trying to pick up the stitches again. That was not not very much fun. I don't I don't know how I managed uh, to do that, but I managed to to knit this bit from from the stitch marker to here all during that one single show in that particular evening. And ever since, I have not even picked up this uh, sock anymore. So I probably should do that. But for now, I have some other projects that are a bit more on the forefront of my mind, actually. So. Yeah, that's it for the socks that I'm now again knitting for my boyfriend out of the, the yarn that my boyfriend got uh, for me for, from Athens. Uh, it's the Katia Camel Socks or Socks Camel, I, I don't know. I have the label right here so I can look it up. Katia Socks Camel. I also think the the color is quite funny. I mean, it it seems like a solid color, but then it's it's not. If you look closely, I don't know to what extent the camera picks this up, but it seems like some bits are more bluish and other bits are more grayish. And um, the color is so close that it's hard to distinguish between them. But there definitely is some variation going on in the color. But yeah, I, th I think it looks nice. And I think my boyfriend will like So they go back in their project bag with a whole bunch of yarn parf. Then there has been one project that is uh, very nice and easy and it has received a majority of my love this the past few weeks. And I can't remember which one was first, but I finished both of these squares and one of them was already on on the go and the other one wasn't but both of them are, are finished now and I remembered like the last square I finished was with uh, an orange end square turns out both of the last ones were so yeah that was not really something I could distinguish them by anymore anyway so uh, yeah uh, this is a part of my sock yarn blanket and I've been showing it since the beginning of the a podcast but here is the majority of the blanket uh, it has this kind of log cabin square border this one this square is the first one that I've knit and the rest I'm pretty sure is has been later this is also the only square that's been soaked and blocked in that sense so uh, the rest of it is unblocked and um, after doing a huge bit of lock cabin squares for the border, I filled in the center with these smaller squares, like the mitered squares or the cozy memory squares or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, um, so this is almost half of the blanket. So after this half of the blanket, I needed to work some more on the border to uh, to complete the border and I have five finished squares out of the ten here and I finished two more since last episode so I have seven completed now and I am currently working on the next square so that will make almost dropping the blanket so I'm currently working on the next square which will be number Eight for the second half of the blanket but with finishing the seventh 
uh, square, I got to the two thirds point of my blanket. So this this bit is officially over two thirds of the blanket, and it's only a matter of completing the next uh, three squares, one of which is already on the go, and then I will have the entire border completed, and I will be at three quarters of the blanket, which seems very exciting. So. Uh, honestly, I just want to make a sprint and, and finish this thing now because, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of exciting and at the same time it's a, it, it's not a very exciting knit to, to work on, but my brain has not been wanting anything exciting for the past few weeks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the colors are exciting though, so, uh, I, I re really like the brightness of these colors and then toned down a little bit with the greys that are in there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just love it. And it's a simple knit, but it's also just huge. So, uh, and, and very nice and warm to work with. Uh, having this on your, uh, your lap, uh, you won't get cold. And here in the Netherlands, it's finally actually cold. Um, We've had temperatures below freezing at night. I think in the daytime we are so sometimes just one or two degrees uh, above uh, freezing. Um, I think this weekend is actually the first weekend that they've predicted snow for this winter. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. Not in this part of the Netherlands, unfortunately, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe soon. Maybe with Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. So. Uh, it would be very nice if we had the snow with Christmas because then I w will not have to go outside and you know going outside in snow uh, it's fun if you just go for a tiny walk but if you have to travel to to work and there's all this kind of traffic jams or trains that are delayed or all kinds of not being able to cope with weather that we actually have quite often of the public transport uh, situation here. Yeah, that's a little bit less uh, funny, I'd say. Anyway, so, uh, yay, a blanket on the go. And then there's uh, one final knitting project that I've worked on, well, actually before last uh, episode, but I couldn't share you yet, but now I can because the pattern is published. And I knit this biscuit hat and I love it. It is so utterly gorgeous. I, I love the this uh, the, the slip stitch pattern. It's it's a very easy pattern. I, I'd say the the ribbing also is just just slightly different from um from what I'm used to. So this is the biscuit hat from Eleanor's Crafts. Um, I'm not really sure if that's a Ravelry name, but I will put it down here if uh, in, in the down bar if it's if it's not. But uh, she, uh, the designer is Lorraine, and Lorraine also has a podcast called Eleanor's Crafts, and um, yeah, she she mentioned a, a few episodes ago that she was looking for test knitters, so I replied like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to do a test knit for you, so I've worked on this hat and I finished it and it looks gorgeous and since last week this um, yeah this hat pattern has been out and it it's lovely it's easy um, I knit it at uh, with a um, slightly thicker yarn I, I think in hindsight than the pattern actually called for but it used up most of one skein so that was very good and I knit a larger size because my head is apparently slightly larger than <laughs> your average head. I don't know. Um, can't remember the sizes because because the sizes were in inches, and I, I measure everything in centimeters or meters or metric system. So um, yeah, that's a little bit different, difficult. I think it's something like 19 inches, but I'm not really sure. Like 19 inches would be the border for fitting in the smaller size and I was just like one inch above that. Now I have to calculate. I'm not I'm I'm not I'm really not sure. Also I I'm not sure if that's the size of the hat or the size of the head the head. So who knows? 
and it's in the pattern. It was a lovely pattern uh, to work on, and I will have to fill out my more detailed notes about the pattern also in my Ravelry page on on the project page there. Um, but because I love this hat so much, I uh, I just thought uh, why not give away uh, a hat pattern like this. So if you would like to to win this hat pattern, um, yeah, I will have a giveaway uh, next week. Um, just in time for Christmas, also, I uh, said. So, um, but I don't want to 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 open this giveaway for too long, uh, because it's just um, I I want Lorraine to you know be able to sell her her pattern, and I don't want to like withhold any people from buying her pattern um, because they have a chance of winning it. So I I just want to you know open this until next week so uh, you have until next Friday which will be the 21st of December uh, and uh, that's midwinter amazing so <laughs> um, uh, you have until midwinter to uh, to enter this giveaway just leave a comment down here on the podcast um, make sure that that it's actually clear that you want to enter uh, the giveaway for this because of course you, you are also free to comment on whatever whatever you, you want from this episode of course so uh, yeah uh, but next week I will draw a winner and I will just send you the pattern on Revelry uh, so that yeah that that that's it about this this hat I I just really love this color and and the yarn is so gorgeous and so my color and I can't wait to wear it outside because I've kept it inside uh, until now. Uh, partially because I've been ill and I haven't gone outside a lot, but also because I just didn't want to, you know, show the the hat while it was unpublished because I don't want anyone to run away with someone else's design. So uh, yeah, here it is. Gorgeous, I love it. So, um, that's all of the knitting that I have been doing, but in the Netherlands it's been Sinterklaas and I wanted to tell you somewhat more about Sinterklaas and how we celebrate, but it's been a while since Sinterklaas has also been gone from the country and I don't really feel that much like talking that much more about it, but he gave me some gifts and I don't expect any Christmas gifts because that's just not something that we celebrate with uh, with gifts. Uh, I know there's quite a few Dutch people who actually do celebrate Christmas with gifts as well, but uh, I think the majority, at least for, for families with small children, they celebrate uh, Sinterklaas instead. So, um, but I got this book from Sinterklaas and it's Yarn Detecture and it's a knitter's guide to spinning. And I have not fully read this book yet but uh, I got it and uh, yeah I, I I started to read in it like the evening that I got it and I'm I'm really happy with it and it inspired me to finish this project that I've started spinning on last week so this is hand spun yarn that I made myself there is a label on it, this because this is the label that came on the braid. So this is from Stranded Dye Works from uh, Amy from the Stranded podcast. She has a fiber company uh, or, or rather a yarn dyeing company, but she also occasionally dyes fiber. And I got my hands on, on some of her fiber and this is a 100% BFL blend. And uh, I made four plies of this yarn. I just I just had 100 grams, so it's not that much, but uh, and it's slightly overplied because you know I'm a beginner spinner. I'm, I'm <laughs> it kind of twists up on itself again. Oops, that means it's quite unbalanced yarn, but it still looks pretty good for uh, you know what my yarns looked like in the past. Anyway, so I'm I'm really happy with the depth of these colors, and I split the braid. Uh, lengthwise in in four pieces and I spun up each piece uh, separately into four, uh, four single plies and then 
ply them together to make a four ply and this is the result I have now I think around 90 grams of fiber because when spinning I tend to pluck out little bits that, that just don't seem to work quite well and I do have a, a little bit of singles left over but um, you, you split the fiber in in lengthwise and you think it's almost one fourth every time but it's difficult to make the the amounts of fiber exactly the same because fiber has like a preferred spot spot to be split in into parts and um, yeah this is the yarn that I've spun and I'm really happy with it and I can't wait to knit this into a hat and it might just become my next biscuit hat I don't know it's also a bit heavier weight but if I need a smaller size on slightly larger needles then I might get away with this amount of yarn I'm not sure it's enough for that hat uh, I could I could leave out some stockinette rows or something and then just make it fit my head and then it will still be a biscuit head this is just so amazing just to have your own hand spun I, I really really love this the, the, the depth of the color that you get in um, a yarn that is spun after it's been dyed it's it's amazing I, I love it I really want to try dyeing fiber at some point and then spinning it myself as well but that's not been all of the spinning that I've been doing because I also had some stash uh, laying around from last year when I went to um, the Oslo Stricke Festival so I got there the uh, Tulvis Favorite uh, yarn uh, or fiber actually it's a, it's a top um, and it's a blend it's Polworth mohair and uh, mulberry silk um, the instructions about this are all in Nor Norwegian so it's made by Tulva school Schultz, the same and she's a um, Norwegian um, textile artist uh, with a background in both spinning and weaving and well she has uh, quite a bit of experience and some story about that and I can't really translate because it's in Norwegian maybe you can read it but <laughs> uh, I uh, I can't but this this fiber um, it was a long bit of top I had I got t two bits of top um, that looked like a long strand uh, of, of this slightly more compacted and then just put in into a bag um, and I had two bags and one of them had quite the purpley bits in, in there whereas the other uh, one really didn't have any purple bits whatsoever in there and the other one had more of these very dark blue tones but apparently this bit with purple also has the dark blue uh, bits but no, the colors were not quite even even though they were I think supposed to be the, the same colorway so I did some um, color management which is the first time I actually did that uh, for, for spinning and I just split the uh, braids both lengthwise and widthwise but I don't know in two directions so I, I just alternated uh, a bit so that I would get purpley bits and blue bits in both plies and then I will make um, two plies and this is what the yarn looks like and I'm pretty sure that it must be the, the silk content in here um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what Polworth is supposed to look like but it's so shiny um, I'm, not, I'm really not sure to what extent the camera picks that up but I really love the way these singles look and um, yeah I can't can't just keep them singles because well this this bit won't, doesn't look that over applied but that's just because it's the end if if I un unravel it a bit more like you will see all these kind of things going on that's just not really workable uh, just to, to knit with um, so I will have to apply it to get it to a somewhat higher extent of balance but it will happen at some point. I love this fiber and um, 
it was quite expensive uh, fiber I must admit I was uh, <laughs> and it was basically the only fiber that I could find at the Oslo Street Festival there was a lot of yarns uh, there but also like a lot of the like the luxury fibers to, to knit socks with or knit shawls with and just not really the kind of yarns that I was looking for uh, when I went to Norway and I understand that Norwegians will go to a festival to find all these special kinds of yarns that they will not find in their local yarn shops but for me um, yeah and Norway and yarn is uh, a lot about like this kind of yarn like the more rustic feeling um, woolen spun two ply or I, I'm not I don't think this is actually two ply I'm not sure sure I don't I don't think so I'm not sure anyway um, it is more about uh, the knitting for color work that kind of yarn and I bought a lot of that um, but just not on the festival just in Oslo itself um, not this yarn by the way this I can get at a local yarn shop close to my a boyfriend's parents so uh, it's it's a Norwegian yarn but not it's uh, Illesvalk Embla um, or Hifa and uh, it's a Marius sweater by the way also a Norwegian pattern so I, I like Norway and a Norwegian knitting um, yeah. but for, for the festival I was like looking for some spinning because spinning fiber is something that unfortunately I cannot really get at my local yarn shop so um, yeah, spinning fiber is not something that I can come across in my local yarn shop they have an excellent selection of yarns but for the spinner there's not that much choice um, or actually there's really no choice there's no spinning fibers or maybe I think they have like one yarn that's basically roving with apply very loosely wrapped around it but no not not really meant for the spinner I think just for for knitters who like knitting with the very big yarns um, so yeah I, I just love how this is turning out and I'm thinking of knitting some kind of top some sleeveless top out of it because I don't have enough to make a sweater unfortunately they did not have that much and also it was quite expensive it would have been I guess one of my most expensive sweaters if I had managed to get my hands on one or two more pieces of top but it will work the way it will work anyway so I think that's all I uh, had to share with you this week and uh, yeah Thank you so much for coming back after this long break and uh, yeah, I hope to see you again uh, next week. Uh